Welcome back. I thought after completing the body, it might be good just to do a tool roundup of all the tools I use to build a body. I'm going to start with where we started in the process with the foam and work it all the way out to uh, step eight, which is the uh, body filler. So let's get started. So you get the pink foam and you need a way to cut it. And after trying many tools, if you've seen some of my last videos, I ended up with this. I call it the hack knife. It's made up of an old hacksaw blade. Wrap a little bit of gorilla or duct tape around there to make it a real simple handle. And then cut the end at a uh, angle so you can make plunge cuts. And that is the one tool you need to cut foam. When you're cutting the big sheets or big slabs of foam, whatever shape you want. If you want to do plunge cuts, you just dive it in. And you can make very intricate little tight curves. If you want to make long straight curves, you use a more of an angle and cut it like this and let it cut inside its own groove and it'll be, it, it cuts really, really straight, fast, doesn't make a lot of uh, dust. It's the one tool you need, probably cost you a buck to make. Once I had the pieces cut and glued onto the buck, then it's time to start shaving it. In some of my last videos I called it carving. Um, I think some people misunderstood that, like wood carving. It's not really that sort of carving. It's really shaping is what you're doing. So after trying a bunch of different tools, because um, you're really taking these big flat slabs and trying to make nice rounded curves out of them, you really need a power tool to do it. It's just too much work to do it by hand. And this is finally what I came up with. A simple orbital sander, the same kind you use uh, on wood projects for thinner sanding, but with a really rough 40 grit uh, sandpaper disc on it. And one disc will last you the entire job, unless you get glue on it. Um, so uh, just that. And then I hook it up to a vacuum cleaner, and that picked up, I'm gonna say, probably 95% of the dust. I, I cleaned, my, cleaned up my canister on my shop vac, and it's about a five gallon shop vac. Uh, I must have uh, emptied it uh, five or six times, and there'd be almost nothing on the floor. So that really worked taking away all that material to form the curves. Um, and it worked pretty fast, and you did have a lot of controllability um, as you're doing it. So, really good tool for the shaping. Then once I was done with that, I made another homemade tool. It's simply a two by four with a piece of 40 grit sandpaper glued, glued on it. And I used that as the very first start of some of my blocking. As I blocked, of course when you block, you do it in the next pattern. Always like that, with a long part uh, parallel with the, the long axis of your whatever panel you've got, the straightest part. And just, just start working it to get it into the shape. Okay? So that's the foam stage. So then, after foam, you go into plaster. And with, you just buy plaster by the bucket, by the, by the gallon. I used, um, I think it was four gallons by the time I was done. Now, plaster only costs about 15 bucks a gallon, so that's about 60 bucks worth of material. If I hadn't done it during the plaster step and waited until, say, body filler step to do all that smoothing, um, the, uh, the body filler costs a little more than four times that. It's about 65 bucks per gallon. Um, so uh, that would have cost, uh, what, about 260, if my math is right. So it saves you two, basically 200 bucks just by going through the, the plaster phase first. Um, and uh, when you go into your plaster phase, of course what you do is you skim coat the whole thing and you do it just like body filler. In fact, you use the same body filler tools to apply it, uh, the squeegees. And I made a homemade tool here as well. I took basically one of these and then cut it into this shape. And this is actually very handy for inside corners. For example, we've got an inside 
corner here, right? So we need a way to spread that uh, material on. So using that shape, you can just come in here and then spread it in there like that. And it's uh, got several different angles on here. So you've got a sharp one right there. And I would use that one for here. It's a fairly sharp uh, curvature here. And use that to spread it in. So very handy tool. Don't be afraid to cut these. I mean, these things cost you, you get a package of, you know, four or five for about three bucks. So cut it and use it. So once that's uh, slathered on with skim coat, then it's time to start block sanding. And at this point, I, I uh, actually, I didn't have uh, body shop tools. So um, I went out and actually bought some sanders. And I, I think the, uh, the thing you really want to do, you want to look at the project you're working on, and then ask yourself what kind of blocks that you're, you're going to need to start sanding with. So I've got this long, straight panel on the side. So I needed a long, straight, relatively rigid sanding block. So I ended up getting one of these Dura blocks. It's a, I think it's about an 18 or 22 inch standard width. And uh, then what I did is I just bought uh, some more sandpaper and I bought it in rolls. This is what I have left now. And for as far as I took this body, I really only had two grits of sandpaper. I had 40 grit and I had 80 grit. So as I was pulling down the, uh, the plaster, I used 80 grit uh, to block it with, so I wanted it to work really fast. And the fact that plaster is softer than body filler means it came off really quickly too. So I, I made a decision early on that, uh, you know, I, I hate sanding. I think most people hate sanding. And I said to myself, I'm gonna do whatever I can do to make the sanding of this easier. So. I did my research, I found some good sandpaper. This is uh, the uh, uh, pressure stick, a PSA type, it just sticks right on. Um, and a really good grid of paper. I did some research, uh, recommendations on good paper. Uh, and same here, PSA, good quality paper can really make your job a lot easier. Okay, that's the sandpaper. All right. Um, then once the, uh, the plaster was, uh, uh, initially blocked out, so it's fairly smooth. I continue with my bodywork tools. Now, I've got some tape on this right now, but basically what this is is guide coat, just like you use. It is the stuff you use for bodywork. And uh, what you do is you pat it on there, you rub it all over, it makes it makes a big old black mess, <laughs> and then you start soft sanding again at an X angle against that darker guide coat that's on there, and when you sand, it will show you all places where the panel is low, okay? And uh, then you go through about uh, probably a couple, three steps of that, where you, um, uh, you, you, uh, you find the low spots, you fill it in with uh, your, the, your filler material, whether it's plastic in the beginning or the, the body filler later on. And then uh, put some more on there, and then uh, sand it again, put some more guide coat, and you probably even have a few more left uh, until you get down until it is perfectly blocked. All right? So that's the areas, particularly here, this is a long straight panel. But I got some really curvy areas here too, all right? Some really curvy areas. So I also needed uh, a more flexible type sanding block. So that's where the soft sanders came in. I hate to advertise with the name, but these are probably the best well-known ones. And in the end, I ended up buying two different sizes. They come in packages of many. Um, and that's why you want to buy it versus just buying one or two. Just buy the package, it's cheaper. And um, this is an 11 inch set. And then I bought also a five inch set. Now I'm gonna tell you, you're not gonna use all of them. But it's good to have them all because once you start sanding, you may find out that there's one that you're really wanting to use that you don't have. So just, just get the set. And the ones that I use mostly, you might guess, is a, a flat one. In fact, I used the same profile, the 5 inch and the 11 inch, and these are, I use these a lot. This is good around 
sort of tight corners. This is good around more contoured corners like this. Works really well. And the next pattern, okay? So use that shape a lot. I also used this shape a lot. I've got some really tight transitions between right in this area here where this panel meets that one and in here where the back meets. And the reason I needed two different styles was I've got two different kinds of contours. Back here, I've got a curve. So what I do is I wrap a piece of sand, uh, sandpaper, same PSA, around here, then hold it and do your sanding to make this very consistent, nice transition. But if you just scrub right in the middle as you're going like this, you'll, you'll dig a groove before too long. So you want to use your sander like this. Again, X pattern out to uh, transition that in. Works really, really well. Now similarly, same profile, different length. I've got this profile in here, but this is a long, straight sort of uh, curvature here. And uh, I started out using this one in there actually, and I found it wasn't getting a straight line, it was starting to curve. So, sandpaper on this one, same profile. And because it is longer, it really helped to give me a nice straight line in there. Very helpful. The other profile that I used quite a bit is I took one of these, this profile, you can see it's a little rounded at the bottom here, and I cut it. These cut very easily with a pair of scissors. So I cut one down, and you notice I cut this part in here as, as well. And that's so um, I could get my finger down in here and really put some pressure on to get myself a really nice, crisp corner here when I was going around the headlights. So I'll show you. So right in here, I've got an inside curve, which really fits that profile. Oops. It really fits that profile. So by kind of coming in here, you can use it like this, you can use an X pattern. But to get a nice crisp line here, you kind of give a little bit of pressure with your finger, and that gives you a nice crisp corner right there. Don't be afraid to cut them. They're not that expensive. They really work well. Then, um, when fence we finish the plaster, moving on to um, the, uh, the uh, epoxy was the next step. And uh, you're gonna do a lot of uh, uh, work with epoxy and gel coat and polyester uh, resin as well. And so you're gonna be mixing a lot of batches. And I mean a lot of batches, because you can only work for so long before it starts to cure on you. So you, you really can't use large batches. So, I find these little containers are really quite helpful. It's the ones you find in the grocery store, or hope you probably got some laying in your kitchen to mix the batches in. A nice thing about these is a couple of things. First off, they're, they're cheap, uh, and they're flexible, um, and neither epoxy resin or polyester resin stick to it. So once you're done with a batch of resin, you simply let it cure completely until it's completely hard. They just go in, you start flexing it, and since the resin is hard, um, it, it just sort of flakes away and it comes out in big chunks and it's very easy to clean. I have probably mixed at least 20 or 25 batches of resin in this. Still using it, uh, it works really well. You can see it still has some, some gel coat you can see that's stuck in there as well, but uh, it works really fine. You can get it off enough so it doesn't flake off and get into your next batch. So that worked really well. Um, and then, um, of course, went into uh, uh, then the, lay the fiberglass on and uh, just put on the uh, both uh, when I did the epoxy and when I got into the fiberglass stage, I just used a brush, just a simple disposable brush to uh, to, to apply the resin. Um, and uh, then with the uh, from from there, of course, the sanding between each step, you. Uh, uh, move on to your body filler, and I treat that just the same as the uh, treat it the same as the, uh, the plaster. Um, you, you again put an entire skin coat over the entire uh, car. Then you start at the steps of doing your first sanding, 
Use a little guide coat, do it a little more sanding to find your low spots, fill it in, do it several times until you get all straight. Um, and it's basically the same tools. The only addition is your mixing board. And there's a couple different styles out there. Uh, there are a number of different plastic ones you can buy that you clean up. But I was doing a lot, a lot of batches and spending a lot of time and acetone cleaning that board. So I moved to uh, the disposable paper type. Basically, you mix a batch and you're done. Just peel off a sheet and uh, throw it away and you're ready to start your next batch right away. And since you're making lots of batches as you're going around, um, this is very helpful um, in this particular situation versus a rig or body work where you don't do one or two batches. You're doing lots and lots and lots of batches to work around the car. Um, so just being able to rip off a page uh, saves you a lot of time and, and acetone too. So that seemed to be the way to go. This had a package of 100 sheets and I bet I used probably 80 of them, but I still have a few left. So that's it. It really didn't take that many tools. You've got some sandpaper, some sanding blocks, very common orbital sander you plug in. Notice no air tools here. My hack knife, that's about a $2 tool, um, and a container. Uh, and that's really all you really need to, to build this entire body in terms of tools. It's really not that expensive, but it does take a lot of time. I almost forgot to mention the replicator. The replicator is used to ensure that the left side matches the right side. It uses three contour gauges. Those are those uh, black and blue items here on the tool that I bought uh, on the internet. I think I bought three of them. These are the 10 inch models. Three of the 10 inch models for a total of, I think it was around $25 all total. All the rest of the replicator uh, pieces that went into this homemade tool were just kind of laying around my shop. It was some scrap plywood and some screws. So it really only cost me $25. And this is a key instrument to help ensure that your car is symmetrical. In other words, that your left side is going to match your right side. In the fiberglass stage, I use the technique where I laid fiberglass on dry and used just a little bit of uh, mist of contact cement to, to hold it there um, and then came back afterwards and then applied the polyester resin. It's kind of known as the, uh, you know, the dry layup style. But once you put the resin on there, it does tend to trap air within the fibers of the fiberglass, so you need to get that air out and so you've got this tool and basically it's just a little roller and you roll it kind of slowly on the uh, on the on the fiberglass which you've got the resin on there and it helps work out the bubbles so this is also another essential tool